Chair recognizes Chairman Powell for the balance of the chairman's time. Thank you, Mr. <clears throat> Speaker, and ladies and gentlemen of the House. You know, I had an opportunity to stand back and listen and sit over there and hear all the, uh, the discussions on both sides. And I'm like Chairman Meadows. I don't expect to change a mind in this House. I do regret something that even in the days when I was a member of the minority party, that the party always took precedence and it took a position despite whatever the, the best interest of their constituents may have been. It was always to try to take an opposing position. And I sat there and I want to thank, give a few thanks anyway today. I want to thank my good friend from Jasper, Mr. Jaspers. I want to thank him for introducing this bill. I want to thank him for taking the, uh, taking the lead. I want to thank my dear friend from Cherokee County, Ms. Ballinger, as a female who stood up and who bleeds from where she speaks, that women have just as much a right to protect themselves as men do. I want to thank all the other speakers. Did a great job. They spoke on this issue very eloquently. At the end of the day, you have a Second Amendment. And as the gentleman who spoke on the minority report, you know, they were very eloquent in what they said. And yes, the Constitution is up for interpretation. That's the reason it is a Supreme Court. But also, the written word of the Second Amendment stands for what it is. A lot of people want to move the comma. They want to say the comma in the phrase means something different. It does not. It does not. Now, as I listen to the members of the uh, opposing side, I just want to critique a few things. I had one, I heard one of the speakers talked about uh, making the uh, observations that this was a movie set. Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you something. In our society today, this is no movie set. This is a dangerous world in which you live in. There's criminals, there's thugs, there's active shooters, there's terrorists, domestic and foreign amongst us. What does that mean to you? Nobody says that you have to bear arms or that you have to have a carry a weapon with you. But that is your right if you so decide to exercise it. I, had some, I heard some of the folks talk in defense of the university system. Well, I beg to differ, but you know, the university system, even though they may think they're in fact the fourth branch of government, they're not. The third branch of government, one of the three branches of government is the legislature. And it's up for us to set policy and pass code statute. And that's what this bill is all about. I heard one of the speakers talk about his children and his grandchildren. God bless you, brother, because that's exactly where you are. At this stage of my life, I'm not near as concerned about Alan as I am about Brody, River, my sons, because I know I know, and God knows, I hope it never happens, that someday their fathers may have to defend them of someone who breaks into a home or something of that, of that nature. You know, we talked about the gun-free zones and the safe zones. You know, I look at, uh, I look at the gun-free zones, it's sort of like shooting over a baited field. Criminals, thugs, terrorists, when you put up their gun-free zone, well, they know they can come in. Because trust me, they're not the people who have a license to carry a weapon. They haven't been vetted. They haven't been background checked to see if they're a thug or a felon or a convicted this or that. They're not, uh, they haven't been vetted to see if they've ever been involuntarily committed into a mental health facility or adjudicated by a court of law as being mentally incompetent. The choice is there. The gun-free zones, they're a danger. Best example I can give you is I had an opportunity to sit in on the, uh, to, to uh, be on a panel discussion at the state bar back in uh, November, December, whenever it was. And before the panel discussion that I served on, there was the chief of police of Marietta, Georgia. And when someone in there asked him the question, what was the best thing to do in the case of an active shooter? He did not mince a word. The police chief of Marietta said, 
the best thing you can have is a law-abiding citizen with a gun in their pocket because that may disrupt an active shooter situation. So, you know, all of these things that we hear are quite interesting. But where's the real difference? The real difference falls between, and I'm not going to say total parties, because I saw, I saw members of principles of the minority party that have voted for pro-Second Amendment bills. So I'm not going to include all of you into the same pot. You know, you might cook in the same pot, but some of you have actually took up the, took up the right vote when you voted on things. Now, as I thought about all of this and what I wanted to say, and I understand that I'm not going to change anybody's opinion out here, but there are some other folks. I want to thank the gentleman behind the podium up here. I want to thank Speaker Ralston. I don't know any member of this House has caught more grief than he has because you can't satisfy everybody. But by virtue of his leadership, he allowed the committee process to work. He allowed the bills to be brought in. He allowed the committee to work, and the committee did work. We did hear the bill. Two years ago, we heard the identical bill. There was 17 hours of testimony, and every member that was there the other day were the same people that heard this testimony two years ago, the same folks. I heard a member or two that said, well, they were aghast because their constituency didn't know we were going to have a hearing. Well, I also seem to remember that some of those members hadn't even been in attendance in the General Assembly for a week or two. And they might should have been there informing their constituents that we were going to have hearings on this bill because it was and known and it did, was properly vetted. Nobody could ever say that they didn't have an opportunity to say what they had to say. As a matter of fact, numerous of the committee members were repetitious in the redundancy of their questions about physical impact, about various things that had no standing in the operation or in the debate of this bill. But that being said, kudos, thanks, appreciation, gratitude to Speaker Austin for standing up on this, no matter which way this bill may go because he has certainly took a world of uh, flack. And he's took it not from the anti-Second Amendments, he's actually took it from the pro-Second Amendments. A lot of those folks who are using this as another election year gimmick to bash him unnecessarily, when there's nobody that I can think of that's been more about Second Amendments and about people's personal protection. As I talk about these things, we live in different times. This isn't the 1940s, the 1950s. Let me tell you, when I was elected to this General Assembly, the first bill that I passed in this House chamber was to allow you to put your weapon in the console of your car. At that time, you had to have it locked in your trunk or you had to have it locked in your dash. The first bill I passed, and then a few years later, we kept taking bites of the apple. And then we came up in the federal government because of the Brady Act, got so embroiled into the restriction of people's rights to buy a weapon. And I remember a good friend of mine at the time, and he's no longer serving, Curtis Jenkins from down somewhere down around Macon area, somewhere down in there. Curtis and I and some others, we passed the bill that established the concealed weapons permit. Prior to that time, believe it or not, you had a little old paper card that said pistol toter's license on it. Pistol toter's license. But we came out with a concealed weapon permit so that you had to have a background check. You had to be looked at and be sure that you wasn't crazy as a sprayed roach. <laughs> and the necessity to that was so that we could protect the people of Georgia's rights so that they didn't have to wait three, seven, ten days to go to a gun store to buy a weapon because they already had the background check already done. And yes, we passed it, but then all of a sudden I wake up to all these emails that come from far out right groups that say, well, they call that a gun tax. Well, folks, that ain't a gun tax. That's a permitting for administrative purposes. And if you remember two years ago, the price got down to half that amount, just the admin fees. But I remember year after year after year, once upon a time, 
there were so many restrictions on weapons. But we used to carry weapons. Wasn't a big deal. Everybody carried a gun at some point. I would like to know about the gentleman's grandfather that shot that quail with a rifle. Dang, he was a good shot. <laughs> or at least there was a little stretching in the story of the family. But everybody had that right to carry a weapon. Because even in the old days, restrictive of all of the laws and what was expected, there's two things that everybody always knew. The first was your constitutional right to own and to bear arms. And yes, the gentleman over there that spoke uh, earlier on the minority report is correct. It's not absolute. We can critique it. And that's what we've done in this campus carry bill. Secondly, ladies and gentlemen, you have a higher right than the Constitution, if you can believe it. And that's the right from God Almighty to protect yourselves, to protect your children, to protect your loved ones. And if anyone did not protect themselves, then it's up to them to hope that the man next door or the lady next door has got that weapon that they'll stand up for you if you're that weak and you can't. Ladies and gentlemen, these are the two rights that you have. It's inherent. You have a right to protect yourself, ladies and gentlemen. And that's all that we're saying. I heard the negatives about the bill. Oh, let me tell you something. Oh yeah, I'd like to see it go further. I think it's ridiculous that we can't put, the, that someone has got a permit there's been background, they can't take it into their domicile, whether it be a fraternity house. But that's not what would pass. Quite frankly, I might have a little bit of concerns about taking it into a UGA Clemson football game. So, you know, that was easy enough for me to do a pass on that one. But let me tell you something. It's a righteous bill. Someone talked about going to tailgating party. Well, let me tell you, you can take a weapon to a tailgating party right now. You can have that weapon in your car. And trust me, if I was at a tailgating party and my car was handy, I would know how to get that weapon quick enough if I needed to, even though I hope that that day would never happen. So there, ladies and gentlemen, when I talk about the changes in the society that we live in today, if you think this is a soft world, if you want to go to a gunfight and take a switch with you or a stick, then I would suggest that you look at the events of Charleston last summer. And no, believe it or not, the deranged young man that killed the nine people in Charleston, he didn't do it because of the flag or the heritage. He did it because he was a deranged young man with a finger on a pistol. And if someone had been in that church that had had a weapon, then they might could have stopped him before he started reloading. And then I would bring your attention to a little affair that happened in Paris, France, the epitome of liberalism. They tell me it's a pretty beautiful city, but the only time I passed through, they were pretty damn rude, just quite honestly. <laughs> but let me tell you something, the Europeans, they don't believe in weapons. They have the most rigid gun control laws in the world. But we're talking about the same continent that fostered the politics of Adolf Hitler that eradicated millions of individuals because gun confiscation was the first on that agenda. And then what did we see in Paris just a few months ago? The peace-loving Parisians went to bed drinking wine and woke up with blood on the streets. Is that something that you can believe in or appreciate? And then within weeks of that, we had another situation. We had the San Bernardino shootings in California. A very typical individual, a citizen, a citizen, a natural citizen of this country who had married overseas, and then they became radicalized. No, we don't live in the same world of Ozzy and Harriet, ladies and gentlemen. We don't live in the same day of the Lone Ranger. 
you cannot expect law enforcement to cover every situation because there's not enough law enforcement out there. And at some point, you have to accept responsibility of the right that the Founding Fathers gave you, and that's the right to bear arms. You have to accept that privilege that the good Lord gave you, and that's to defend yourself, the right of survival. Ladies and gentlemen, I would ask you to support this bill. This is just the next bite of the apple, the next step forward. No, it's not the end of the world because I defy anyone to show me the statistics where anyone that has been granted and vetted a background permit has been the, the criminal and the culprits. Mr. Speaker, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for letting me get on this little bit of a tangent. And I would ask you for your favorable consideration for House Bill 859. The chairman has yielded the will. Is there any objection to adopting the committee substitute? The chair hears none. The committee substitute is adopted. Is there any objection to agreeing to the report of the committee, which was favorable to the passage of the bill? The chair hears none. The report of the committee is agreed to. Shall this bill now pass? All those in favor of the passage of the bill will vote aye. All those opposed to vote no, and the clerk will unlock the machines. Have all members voted? Have all members voted? If so, the clerk will lock the machine on the passage of House Bill 859. The ayes are 113, the nays are 59. This bill, having received the requisite constitutional majority, is therefore passed.